Saving seashells for seabed scatter. Try saying that five times fast. Welcome to another episode of The Gamesmith, and in today's episode, we're going to be turning simple seashells from the dollar store into scatter terrain for your aquatic adventures. The focus of our build is going to be these large decorative seashells. This is far more shells than we're going to use for this build, but I can use them for other projects later on. We also have these smaller jars of different types of shells, and these can be used to add little accents to our terrain. I really like working with cork, and I've chosen this dollar store cork sheet as my basing material. To begin, I'm going to measure and cut 3 inches or 6 centimeter squares out of this sheet. I don't know how many of these I'm going to actually build today, but I think it's going to be at least 5 or 6, maybe 7 or 8. Then I'm going to turn these squares into circles using this huge base. I want to save all the large chunks to use as decoration later on. I want to chip away at the outer edges of the cork in order to create a texture around the outer edge. Now we'll start adding surface features to the base with the cork fragments that we saved. We can easily mold the fragments by breaking them into the shapes we want and gluing them into place. The type of glue you use should be a contact cement, like Gorilla Glue or E6000. Just an FYI, I'm working on six or seven different bases on this project. So don't worry if you see different structures on a base throughout this video. I found that switching between builds in different parts of the video is an easier way to show a variety of builds rather than highlighting each build separately. After all, I'm basically repeating all of the steps on each base. And if you'll indulge me, I'd like to spend just a minute talking about cork. You, like me, may have heard that cork trees are becoming endangered, so I decided to check this out. Apart from the fact that I really do like working with this material, I am quite concerned about the environment. I found out that cork trees are not, in fact, endangered due to over-harvesting. Cork trees live between 2 and 300 years, and it takes 25 years before any of the cork can be harvested. Now once that harvesting begins, it takes about 9 years for a cork tree to regrow its bark layer. So this is a very renewable resource, and it isn't going anywhere unless people stop using cork. That being said, about 70% of the world's cork supply is used in corking wine bottles. So if wine consumption drops off, then that would obviously affect cork production. Cork mainly comes from countries along the Mediterranean Sea, and in fact it's illegal to cut down a cork tree in Portugal. Anyway, back to our build. How you design and build your surface features is up to you, but I suggest that you don't overcrowd your base. Since cork is so versatile a construction material, you should be able to create any manner of seabed-like structures. Columns, overhangs, arches, mounds, pinnacles, basins, all manner of cracked surfaces, and the list goes on. Make sure to keep all your fragments when you're done so that you can use them on future builds. Also, because cork is organic, you can compost it. We're going to mix some dark grey acrylic paint and some matte Mod Podge in order to reinforce our cork. This grey is called Graphite by Craftsmart, but any dark grey will do. In fact, I think I'm going to add some black paint into our Mod Pod mixture in order to make it a bit darker. Next, we're going to completely cover our cork structure with our Mod Pod mixture. Make sure to get the mixture into all the nooks and crannies, but don't glob the paint on. We want to preserve most of the texture that the cork has in order to create a rocky appearance on our build. Next we take some sand. I chose this decorative green sand so that it would be easy to see. And we sprinkle it over the surface. We use this sand in order to add texture to our build. We do this while the Mod Podge mix is still wet, since Mod Podge is also a glue. After the Mod Podge is dry, we'll add on another layer in order to seal in our decorative sand. After all, we don't want any sand coming off our build while it's at the game table. Once the Mod Pod and paint mixture is dry, we want to add a dry brush highlight. I like this ocean breeze or turquoise-like color in order to highlight our base. I'll use a broad flat brush for this task. I'll load the brush from the cap and remove the excess onto my plastic palette here. Then I'll lightly drag the brush over our surface so all the raised textures will capture the paint. We paint only the highest surface features and leave all the cracks and crevices the original grey. 
If you'd like more information on dry brushing, please check out our foundations video on the subject. I'll put a link in the corner for you. Maybe it's just me, but I think this color combination has an underwater appearance or feel to it. Next I found this plastic plant decoration at the dollar store. I was instantly reminded of seaweed, so I thought it would make a great decoration for our seashell scatter terrain. The plastic plants are really easy to remove from the foam base. Then I just need to remove the barb spike from the bottom so I can attach it to the cork base. I think hot glue will work best for this. After I add a dollop of hot glue, I can sprinkle on some decorative sand in order to camouflage it. Now I can sink the plastic plant into the disguised hot glue and keep it in place until the bond takes hold. Then with a stir stick, I can actually mold the glue in order to improve the grip on the plant. Once the plant is secure, I can repeat this process several times and add as much seaweed as I want. Now unless you're actually specifically making seaweed beds, I would use this feature rather sparingly. We don't want to overcrowd our build because we still have to add our seashells. Next I'll return to the grey Mod Podge and cover the decorative rocks to reinforce the hole. Now the reason I didn't do this before I added the turquoise paint was so that I didn't have any issues painting the rest of the base with the plants in the way. Sometimes what I think is a time-saving measure on a build actually creates more work for me. I'll leave it up to you, the viewers, to judge whether I made the right decision or not. Once the grey Mod Podge is dry, I'll just quickly touch up the turquoise dry brush over these small areas at the base of the plastic plants. We want to use the same type of dry brushing that we did on the original base so that the paint job looks consistent. I'll just zoom in here real quick so you can see how the plant base is camouflaged. Next we want to prepare our shells. I suggest that you wash your shells, they typically have a fine powder on them. Seashells are typically composed of calcium carbonate, which is secreted by the animal that uses the shell as a house. When the shells dry out, they shed a fine powder that coats them. The powder is easily removed with soap and water. After our large seashells are dry, we add them to our bases. To effectively glue our shells to the base, we need to be aware of its contact surfaces. In other words, which parts of the shell actually touch the base. We're going to use the E6000 again because it will bond almost any two surfaces together. Once you've placed the shell in the position you want, you'll need to leave it for a few hours. For this base, I have some shells that I want to glue into a clam-like structure. I have these two shells that sort of fit together. Because I'm keeping the shells open, I don't need the edges to actually match up perfectly. I want the bond to hold quickly, which is why I'm using the hot glue instead of the E6000. At the same time, I can also add some glue to the bottom in order to glue the shells to the base. And I can use some tweezers to remove any glue wisps left behind. You may want to add a wash to your shells in order to bring out different features, but that entirely depends on you. Next I want to add these tiny shells as accents to our scatter terrain. I'll just sort out a few of these for their color and shape. Now I'll go back to using the E6000, but I'll put some on a palette and then use a craft stick in order to apply it. The smaller craft stick will give me more control over how much glue I put on the base or the shell than if I squeezed it directly from the tube. Now I'll switch to another base and keep adding shells. Once again, you don't want to overcrowd your base. The philosophy, less is more, applies here. We want to create a sense that the terrain is underwater, but not that there's been a mollusk apocalypse of some kind. And with the final shell and leaving it to dry, we're finished our seashell scatter terrain. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial as much as I've enjoyed making it. Although in hindsight, I think I should have used a greater variety of large shells on this build, but I'm still happy with how it turned out. I also really like how the seaweed plastic plants turned out. I should also note that building these scatter pieces in bulk really helped me save time. If you'd like to support what we're doing here at the Gamesmith, please hit the subscribe button. If you're already a subscriber, please hit the thumbs up button and leave a comment. You might also check out our blog at thegamesmith.org. We post the building materials for all our crafts on our website too. You might also check us out on Facebook, Pinterest and Instagram. Until next time, I'll see you at the table.